On December 21st, 1999, I was in New York City. On our way home, when I was walking out to the car, to the, one of our friends came to pick us up. A guy came up from behind, put his arm around me, and said, don't scream, I've got a gun, and I want to you. Um, then I was kidnapped and raped. We came to a stairwell, and he said, we're going down here. It was just an empty stairwell, and there he proceeded to beat, rape, and sodomize me. But I obviously knew what they were up to when they pulled me into the car. Um, so they raped me one at a time, two at a time, three at a time. It lasted, the police report, I, I didn't know at that time, but said that it lasted for 79 minutes until the police found me. I screamed, somebody help me. And he hit me so hard that I thought, that's it, I'm done. I thought that every breath that I took would be my last. He said, what's wrong with you? And I was shaking so much, I just turned and looked at him, dead set in the eyes and said, you just raped me. What the hell do you think is wrong with me? They took duct tape around my eyes and pushed me out of the van and told me to run. Uh, so I did, I ran for a long time. I don't know how long. There's the sense of fear, there's shock, there's anger, you know, and kind of, where do I go from here? I felt like a doll, like I wasn't a person of importance anymore. Nobody needs to live through that. In my head, I've been over that night, over and over and over, and I've been talking about it over and over. and. You come to a certain point when you cannot let it go. Rape is a horrible, awful thing, and it, it takes a while, and it's baby steps. It's been long. It's been a lot of nightmares and fear of going out, fear of meeting strangers. But I found that that I just have to do something, and I have to do it myself. That's the thing. You have to make a decision to move on. For me, the rape will always be with me, it doesn't define me, but there are still times that things will slip up and I have to remember, oh yeah, that's a trigger and you know, I, I just know how to deal with those things now. There's times where you, yeah, where you beg like, I just wish that I could wake up the next morning and that it, it would have been like before, that this just wouldn't happen to me, but it did and it's, you just have to fight through it. I want to let people know that, and especially women, if you're going through this, talk about it, get help, it's okay. There is light at the end of the tunnel and there are thousands of people that are willing to help you. Just reach out, you are not alone. I, I think society still has some stigmatism of, we don't talk about this if it happens. And that, that's not okay because that's the only way people heal. I think people are scared and that they kind of have to blame the victim to tell themselves that I'm not, I wouldn't put myself in a situation like that. It could never happen to me. It couldn't happen to me because I dress the right way and I don't go out late at night and I don't do this and that, you know? That's, I think that's a form of protection for people. It's not just the person that goes through the rape, it's also the friends and the family. That's the thing, it doesn't only affect the victim. It affects family, it affects friends. It's, yeah. Still to this day, my dad, you know, he, he does, he tears up and it breaks my heart because I'm okay. And I'm sorry that I put them through that. Even though it's not my fault, I would never wish this on it my worst enemy because it is hell not just for yourself but for everybody that loves you i want people to realize that it's more than just a police case or more than just a news case it's actually a life that can be ruined so i think it's sad when we watch the news and people just turn the tv off and that's it it was just a news case because it's not it's a life.